Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you different minor aspects of glassware. Even we call it minor, it is still very useful when planning and conducting your experiment. I hope you will be amazed by the discovery from this video. So, I'm going to conduct a series of simple experiments to find out the common capacity and dimensions of glassware like this different size of typical and extreme size of test tubes because and the durian bottle I'm going to estimate the capacity of the test tube not using any measuring cylinder but by taking advantage of the fact that the density of water is very very close to 1 gram per milliliter so I can just fill up a vessel with water then pour out the water and measure its weight then how many grams of water there means how many milliliters of there but before we begin I would like to bring your attention to the material of the glass I don't know if you have aware of that but some glasses, like this glass light, have a distinctive green mist of blue green tint on its side. When we move directly ahead, it seems transparent but it's more noticeable there's a color on the side for typical pickers and test tube nowadays they are usually clear when they for the look at it actually the glass line is made of something called soda line. That is typical glass, typical glass mixed with soda line, which gives it a lower melting point, easier for recycling, but it's inferior in terms of heat resistance and chemical resistance. For the other glassware like because and test tube that looks transparent, usually they are something called borrowed silicated glass. That is glass loaded with borrow, which gives it a much better mechanical strength, chemical resistance, and practically it expands or contracts less when exposed to heat or cold so it is less likely to fracture when you are doing experiment that involves fire or ice so if your school or laboratory contains glassware that contains a mix of both kind of glass try to pick the transparent one especially if you are heating or cooling something So I'm going to use this speaker to hold our water for final measurement and I'm going to label it. Most of the time in laboratory nowadays we use markers like this. In the US or rural Europe, you will likely have heard sharpies. 
but actually any all based permanent markers will do. When labeling, try to avoid writing the all based marker on the white area. If you write something on the white area with ball pen or marker, all based marker, it will be quite difficult to remove afterward. And if you leave the mark for a few days, it will be nearly impossible to remove completely. So, what is white mark for? Actually, it is for pencil or something called grease pencil. Which is actually similar to wooden color pencil. Okay, this, this one I have here is made from Japan. Mitsubishi under the brand name the metal brand. So uh, at the end of the experiment, I'll clean both marks and see which one is easier or more difficult to clean. So now I have a bottle of water ready here and I'm going to find the dimension of the typical test tube. around 15 cm in length around 18 mm and internal diameter around 15 mm so if you have broken some test tube from your school and you want to buy a replacement find someone for some test tube that has a similar dimension and for the capacity When you are pouring out liquid from vessels like test tube, that has a tendency to drip back, to, back through the wall of the vessel. Well, try to pour it out as quickly as possible. The slower you pour it out, the more likely 
the more liquid will drip through the wall and lock. So for this particular test tube, it contains around 15 ml of water. Larger pollen tube. This is around seventeen point five CM. In length, with an external diameter around twenty. And the internal diameter around seventeen. The volume is around forty mil. Very small test tip here. Have a length of only 10 cm. External diameter 12 mm. Internal diameter 1 cm. Its capacity is around seven to eight milliliter. I have a few drop loss, so we can assume it's maybe closer to ten milliliter.
now lastly for this really huge well I don't know if you call it boring tube or test tube the length here is roughly 20 cm External diameter closing into three cm. And internal diameter twenty seven mm. And the volume is a staggering slightly more than a hundred milliliter. Lastly, I'll show you how to clean off the labels with on glassware. In the past, usually we use ethanol or acetum to dissolve and wipe off the oil base permanent marker but now there is a better alternative and one of the best I can think of is the use of magic sponge which is also called melalin sponge you can buy it on the cheap from home improvement store or hardware store and sometimes even in supermarket to use this Better wet it. Chip off excess liquid. Then wipe. So you see, you see, the marker is gone after a few scrub and now we try to scrub off the mark on the white area the red one was previously written using a grease pencil while the blue eye was the permanent marker so the grease pencil mark is gone first there are still something left on the permanent marker side. Still a little bit left behind. Scrub it first. Uh, still a dot left behind. It's quite an effort to completely remove the marker. So this concludes the video. This time we will talk about the concentration unit and various working range of chemicals in terms of concentration or amount. I hope you enjoy this video and you can take something home. Thank you for watching.